The psalmist continues with his interrogatory prayer in Psalm 69, verse 26, which inadvertently opens the door on this side of the cross for a discussion on post-lapsarian human nature and groupthink. Psalm 69, verse 26 reads, For they have persecuted him whom you yourself have smitten, and they tell of the pain of those whom you have wounded. We see a, a frequent uh, reenactment of the act of ganging up and persecution when it comes to a group of schooly bully, or schoolyard bullies. It, it seems to be a base part of our old human nature. And while the psalmist may have some personal reference in mind, or even some scrolls concerning the affliction of Job, we read in Job that instead of friends expressing empathy, they endeavored to prove his suffering was justified. In their minds, he was indeed a hypocrite, fostered by his impatience and lack of uh, fessing up to hidden sin. Regrettably, this human trait continues to bear its ugly founds, fangs, especially when it concerns Israel. When a godly man appears to be hard-pressed, aren't we colloquially inclined to just brush it off as bad luck or, or uh, uh, often with an uncouth or, or undaunted phrase, sucks to be him? The more fortunate, unredeemed man may be happy to stand on the downtrodden just to see over the fence. As Christians, we should keep in mind that God takes note of this. He may on rare occasions allow bullies to act as a rod of correction for his adopted children, but let there be no doubt he will eventually avenge his own. We read in Zechariah 1, 14 through 16, So the angel who was speaking with me said, Proclaim, the Lord of hosts says, I am extremely jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. I am fiercely angry with the nations that are at ease, for I was a little angry, but they made it worse. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, in mercy, I have returned to Jerusalem. My house will be rebuilt within it. That is the declaration of the Lord of hosts, and a measuring line will be stretched out over Jerusalem. Despite what you may have heard from miscreants, God is not done with Israel personally. I look for I look for the prophetic sense which guides us in the psalm once again to think about our Lord Jesus, who welcomed him, those who welcomed him only a few days earlier, now stood on the stone pavement and cried out loudly, Crucify him. Isaiah fifty three, four through seven reads, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to their own way, and our Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before a shearer's is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. The natural born man will add iniquity to iniquity, and thus receive the due penalty. When unrepentant people are left to their own devices, apart from the forgiveness wrought by Christ on the cross and the infilling work of the Holy Spirit, the cup of iniquity will inevitably overflow its full measure and thus justify God in applying the full wrath of justice. Divine mercy will not be forced on those who reject the proclamation of Christ. They simply remain condemned, and their names remain expunged from the Lamb's Book of Life. I could almost wish that I had the easy believism of some, uh, but I fully believe that what God's Word says, and personally would fear to miss the mark because I listened to some wistful human interpretation of the Word of God. When our Bible says in Romans 1.18, For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godly, godlessness and unrighteousness of people who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth. I believe that he meant it. 
or in Colossians 3, 5 through 6. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your worldly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath has come upon the disobedient. For the spirit-filled believers, Christ has appeased the wrath of God that stood against us. According to Hebrews 10, 26 and 27, For if we deliberately sin after receiving the knowledge of truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire about to consume the adversaries. 